folks. Welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Got some news to bring to you today and a, and a very interesting video that's just surfaced in the last two or three hours. I can't verify its authenticity, but we'll show it here in just a little bit and let you be the judge of, of what it is. Uh, it's kind of interesting and it fits right within all of this talk of increased war, nuclear war talk. Uh, and that's kind of where we're mostly going to focus in today's video. Wanted to let you know, let me back up here. Uh, probably should have planned for this. I don't want to fall in the creek. So see the t-shirt? Yes, this was my design. I, I come up with it. And if you're interested, let's go back. Yes, uh, this t-shirt this gets you put on an FBI list. You know, on an FBI list because of this t-shirt. It's got the Betsy Ross flag. That's the Gonzalez come and take it flag. I'll just do this. And then this is the, whoops, that's the don't tread on me. Yep. If you're interested in that t-shirt, I'll leave a link in the description below. They're made by some very, very good friends of ours. It's just a, a small family business that prints these up. Um, this isn't like big, you know, Amazon stuff. So it takes a little bit. They make in each one individually um, for your order. So, you know, it, it takes more than two days to get your shipment. But if you're interested, I'll leave a link down below. Also, wanted to mention, someone sent me an email that they are having a, a prepper meeting and they're opening it up to the public. They're hoping um, local mags and stuff, people that are either in one or wanting to start one will get involved. And this is over in Arizona. Uh, it's in west of Tucson, Arizona. And I'll leave a email that should pop up below if you want to email this person. And ask them more about it. It's on October 17th, and that is west of Tucson, Arizona, uh, October 17th prepper meeting uh, for you know anyone in Arizona that wants to, to, to learn and to meet others. So, you all familiar with the big bridge blowing up in Crimea? Uh, this is not new news. Uh, this is something that you probably all know about. Uh, Putin has declared that it is a terrorist attack and that it is an attack on basically the, the homeland, on, on Russian sovereign soil. And why this is important is, is because um, he and the, the Russian government has, has said repeatedly that if any of their infrastructure or any major attack was made towards or to Russian, uh, the Russian soil, then they would certainly consider uh, retaliating with a with a nuclear weapon. So here's just one thing. It's just it's 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 escalating even more. Uh, Putin has called a Security Council meeting within their government, uh, and it, it the the rumor mill is is that this is what they're discussing, uh, basically how they want to retaliate uh, against this bridge being blown up. It doesn't appear that the bridge was completely destroyed, but it's definitely uh, received some damage. And uh, so we're, we're, of course, unsure of, of how this is going to play out, just like anything, but probably isn't going to play out in, in a good way because this whole thing that's happening, not just the war in Russia, but everything else is playing out pretty negatively. Uh, North Korea, they're shooting off more missiles again. I don't know if that's a big deal. I sometimes think with North Korea, and I don't want to discount the, 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 the possibility of them doing anything. It's almost like, you know, hey, don't forget about us, you know. We're, we're fo you're focusing on China and Russia. Well, we're the bad guys too. Don't forget about us. Uh, but I don't think we should completely discount North Korea um, because... Uh, they definitely have capabilities of, of hurting at least, if nothing else, our allies and military bases over in that part of the world. Uh, and who knows? Uh, we, we don't fully know all of their technology, so we don't really know what all they're capable of. But certainly should be something we should uh, be worried about or at least concerned with. Worried may not be the proper word, but at least concerned with. Um, more in the news, uh, it, it just, it, everything's kind of heating up even more over there. Elon Musk has even weighed in and said that the, you know, that it, it looks like that we are definitely getting closer to nuclear war, that, that, that that's the direction that we're headed. Um, uh, all of the, the information that we're gathering just kind of fits with that. Everything in the news that we're seeing, uh, and it, it's difficult because we try to figure out what is legitimate, uh, what is fake, uh, what is a distraction, what is controlled. Um, 
So sometimes we just have to take it for what it is and see that it does appear that that, that, is, that train is moving along and we don't know where its destination is quite yet. Uh, the video that I wanted to show you is gonna pop up here probably in just a second. Uh, this video uh, has been circling the internet in the last two or three hours. It's had a few people send it to me and wanted me to pay attention to it. Um, and apparently, and again, I cannot verify this. I cannot verify that this is current. I mean, it's obvious what it is, but I can't verify that this recently happened or it didn't ha did happen 10 years ago. Um, this is a one of these uh, parades that Russia has been doing, and that is something we know they have been doing, where they're parading around their ICBMs, or you're, they're seeing people are seeing them moved. Okay, uh, tanks and their ICBM. These are the big missiles. These are the big nukes that could strike the United States and do a lot of really bad, bad damage. Um, and apparently, the story is on this video is as they're as they're parading in front of this building. This is the U.S. Embassy in Moscow, and uh, if it's not shown at already, you'll be able to see for just a moment where the camera zooms in, and you can see the American flag. Now, I understand this is a very blurry vi video; it's not good quality. I was unable to find anything better quality. Uh, but you can certainly see that they were, they're driving past the, the American embassy. The story is on this is that um, this is being is taken as a, as a threat to the United States, as a, as a last warning. This is the last warning uh, is what a lot of people are kind of saying. Again, I cannot verify. I, I, I've, I've done my own, what I feel, due diligence and, and dug around online, and I can't figure out uh, whether this has been you know, made 10 years ago or a few hours ago. Uh, it's very easy to get that mixed up online. So take it with a grain of salt. But if it is in fact legitimate, uh, this does look like uh, an escalation or at least a threat uh, to potentially escalate. And it's something that of course we should be aware of. Um, Morgan Stanley is, and then we're shifting gears. We're gonna shift gears away from war and we're gonna talk about finances and economy because well, that's also in just disarray and it's kind of falling apart. Uh, Morgan Stanley is warning that um, banks, central banks, uh, big banks are, are hurting. They're, they're going under, they're going broke. Um, here's a chart here and it shows how, uh, how much money these banks have been losing. And this goes back to like 2018 or something like that. And you can see there where it kind of falls off uh, that they're in the negative. There is... Uh, there's a growing theory, and I'm not going to say that it's accurate because I don't know, but I will say that it sounds pretty good, that the Fed, and there's been warnings from the United Nations, there's been warnings from, from other banks and, and, and heads of banks, that, that if the Fed keeps raising the interest rates, it's going to cause these banks, you know, Bank of America and all these big banks to collapse, that they, they, can't, they can't keep up, okay? And while a lot of us would say, well, they certainly wouldn't do that. I mean, these banks run the Fed and everything. Well, okay, you know, they're all, they're all buddies and everything, but maybe the intent is to collapse these banks. Um, going back to the, the stock market crash and into the Great Depression of the 1929 and 30, um, what, the, what the Fed did then was not to, to, to support the banks. It was to just let them fall. And it's very possible that that's the intent in what's going on. And it's not that the banks are fighting against the Fed. I'm, I, I would guess they're in on it too. They got to look like they're not, but they probably are because what this would do is most certainly, absolutely open the door um, to a CBDC, a digital uh, currency. Uh, if these banks uh, start to collapse, if they're not able to stand, whether they go completely under or not, it just as it, it appears as if they're going to collapse, uh, it would definitely uh, open that door so that they could say, well, we have a solution to this, and, and this solution isn't just good now. It'll, it will prevent this from ever happening again. We'll never have any more economic problems if we just accept this CBDC and, you know, we got a gun to your head. If you don't, then banks and, and money is going to collapse and it's going to be like Venezuela. So you got to take it. Uh, it's very possible that that is uh, a, 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 what's going on. I don't know that. I, I don't. And well, no one does other than the people that are doing it. Um, but it does pretty sound like a pretty sound theory. Um, 
the economy is most certainly suffering greatly and with the increase in in the crude oil prices going up we're, we're gonna see well we've already seen prices of everything increase and and we, we had a little bit of a reprieve because fuel prices came down a little bit not a lot i get it it wasn't a lot but it did come down enough to probably slow down the overall progression or at least give the appearance let me just say that it appeared to slow down the overall progression of inflation uh, but that's going to change real soon uh, this is a, a picture here i pulled off the internet this is from a bakery i don't know where it doesn't matter the fact is is that they're showing why their prices are going up why they have been going up and there's three charts there one is january 21 one is january 22 and the other, the last one is July of 22. So we're talking an 18 month period. And, and these are ingredients that they commonly use, flour, sugar, salt, shortening, icing, you know, things like that. Some of these items have more than doubled in 18 months, more than doubled. And I, I think a lot of times because, and this isn't putting anyone down. This is just, I think it's just a human thing and it's especially an American thing that we're, we, we focus on the here and now. And I think a lot of us have forgotten what we were paying for something 18 months ago. You know, what were you paying back in, you know, January of 21 um, for flour, for a loaf of bread, for a gallon of milk, for a dozen of eggs? It was a lot less than what you're paying right now. Um, I know that everyone's feeling this. We're feeling the hurt when you go to the grocery store and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm pretty, pretty confident in that it's going to get worse. That it's, it's not, we're not even close to the end of this, folks. Uh, this is why we got to keep repairing. I, I've had a couple of people comment. I think they probably were new viewers. Well, you're telling us all this stuff that's going on. Why don't you tell us how to get prepared? Well, watch the channel. Go back and watch many, many videos in the past. Um, the, the the easiest answer to give because things are, are are getting pretty hairy is you need to focus on self-sufficiency okay yes prep up if you're able to go out there and you're able to buy food if you're able to stock up on things tools and, and when i say tools i mean tools to help you become self-sufficient like gardening tools tools to maintain and repair things around your house um, you need definitely like things like seeds uh, to plant food because I, I come this spring, I, I said over on, on um, my Patreon today, um, I have a just a gut feeling and I could be wrong on this, but come this spring, seeds may be kind of hard to get because I would say by spring, um, you know, right around the planting season, it's going to be really, really bad and, and people are going to, be, many more people are going to be aware of it. And so they're going to kind of go into this panic mode. Oh my goodness, we've got to grow food this year because it's really bad. We're going to starve to death because we can't afford groceries. And we're going to have a lot more people than normal buying seeds. It's just a feeling. It's just, just it's a possibility. It doesn't hurt to stock up on some seeds. Um, and, and then and then just kind of focus on the things that you can do around your, your home or your homestead that will make you less dependent upon the system. You know, if you're highly dependent upon utilities and electricity, you know, either having solar power or just getting to the point that you can do things without electricity is going to make you less dependent upon it. Um, having a good supply of your own medical needs, you know, to take care of basic medical care that you can do at home, uh, making sure that you have enough medicines over the counter medications. And, and if you can stockpile as many prescription, your prescription medications that you're, you can, um, this is just some of the basics that you need to be doing, uh, focusing on water. Water is very important. Um, you need to be able to store some water. You can't store it all though. You need, you know, a couple of weeks is probably max for most people that they could store for water. You know, you're talking at minimum, at minimum, like nine, 10 gallons a day per person really is, is really the minimum. I mean, three gallons a day, that just keeps you alive for the most part. Um, but between three and nine gallons a day per person is what you really need to be focused on. That's a lot of water. It's a lot of space and a lot of weight. So you also need to be looking at sources of water. Uh, you know, your, your city water supply is not, cannot be your only source. You know, maybe you live by a creek or you have a pond or a lake, uh, or you can capture the rainwater. 
uh, that those are options that you should definitely look into. And then you want to have a way to purify that. Um, you know, you can get a, like an Alexa Pure uh, tabletop filter. Uh, there's smaller filters. You can make your own filter. There's all kinds of YouTube videos teaching you how to make your own filter. Uh, whatever it is, you need to do that with water. So you need to basically cover the basics. Food, water, shelter, and when I say shelter, also include heat. It's going to be cold this winter. Are you able to heat your home uh, if grid goes down or if gas supplies, if you're heating with propane or natural gas, what if they're very expensive or in short supply? Do you have an alternative to heat your home? Uh, you need to be thinking about these things. You know, if you don't, then you probably should be buying up some blankets, going to the Goodwill and thrift stores and buying up old quilts, making sure that you have enough, you know, winter coats and winter socks and gloves to keep warm uh, because it may come to that. Uh, a way to cook your food if, if the utilities go off. Uh, the way things are going, we just, we can't, we can't know exactly what's going to happen and it could get pretty bad. So we need to make sure that everything is covered. Then, of course, you know, personal defense is always uh, something that you should be focused on and thinking about. Right now, ammunition's pretty cheap, but if a nuke goes off, I'd say there's going to be a lot of people stocking up real fast. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that, that are kind of asleep right now that when they hear Russia drops a nuke somewhere, it's, it's red dawn is on. And so we got to go buy everything that exists. And so you should be stocking up now if you're able to. Uh, doing these and many other things... I can't name it all in one little video, uh, are just some steps to get you much more prepared. The reality is, and I know this sounds harsh, but it is true. I mean, I'm kind of the kind of person that just knows, that's known for just speaking it how it is. Uh, you should have been doing this a long time ago. You really should have. Um, I'm not saying that it's too late. I'm not saying that you can't get ready, um, but it's just going to be harder on you. Uh, but you should have been doing this a while back. And if you haven't been, uh, you should take things quite seriously because uh, things are moving at a pretty rapid pace. It may not seem like that for some of you if you're not really kind of paying attention, but I'm telling you, it's moving pretty pretty fast. And to the point that it may not be many weeks and many months down the road. It may just be a few days down the road. We just don't know. Uh, and so that's why you need to take things quite seriously, folks. You need to be getting your houses in order every part of your house in order, your household, your family, getting them getting them prepared mentally, okay? You, your, your spouse, your kids, your community, get them prepared mentally. You need to be becoming prepared uh, physically, uh, getting yourself in shape, and when I say physically, but also physically as the things that you have that will help you survive. And then most importantly, spiritually, spiritual preparedness, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring you down and it's going to uh, way down your, your 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 spirit and it's going to be very taxing on you because this in the end is all spiritual warfare uh, folks get your houses in order um, and, and and do it seriously thank you all for watching and i'll catch you in the next video